Hello and thanks for joining us for this Thursday edition of TV 11 News at Noon. I'm Kaylin Johnson and for Journey Taylor, here are the headlines we're following now at noon. Cleanup efforts continue two months after the devastating March tornado. Today we reflect on the progress made in some of the hardest hit areas. Sweden is on the verge of being Europe's first smoke free country. Just ahead, we'll share what's driving the movement to stop tobacco use. Plus, a 1980s classic is returning to the big screen when you can expect the animation film in theaters in our entertainment headlines at 1222. But first, meteorologist Nathan Scott is here with us. I feel like it's been a beautiful stretch of weather. Can we expect more of that? Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, McKellen. It is June 1st. That means that meteorological summer has begun or summer for weather records. And it's starting to feel like it out there. A little more humidity in the air. We've got temperatures into the low to mid 80s across the state. Those clouds are bubbling up. Those cumulus clouds. Here's the dew point temperature, though. Dew points are not to the 50s anymore. They're into the low to mid 60s, so it feels just a tad more uncomfortable compared to what it has been feeling like over the past couple days. Those clouds trying to produce a few showers already into the Ozarks. Looks like one little shower trying to pop up in Newton County and also Stone County. So we're going to have that potential. There could be a stray shower, maybe a storm. The best chances will be for North Arkansas and Northeast Arkansas. Temperatures today topping out into the upper 80s to lower 90s. The chance of rain goes up just a pinch on Friday. Our best chance of maybe some scattered showers and storms arrive on Saturday, and I want to stress the maybe. I'll explain why that is the case coming up. It's been two months since an EF3 tornado ripped through communities in central Arkansas, and cleanup continues to be the focus. The city of Little Rock and volunteers are actively cleaning up the thousands of trees and cubic yards of debris every day. However, one Little Rock City director says finalizing insurance has been difficult for dozens. A lot of people uh, that live in these areas were underinsured. Um, I know some people plan not to rebuild. June 11th is the final day the city will be coming to neighborhoods to collect debris. Rock City Running is celebrating a triumph today, reopening in a new location. Their former location at the Colony West Shopping Center was destroyed in the March 31st tornado. Their new location opened at 10 o'clock this morning at the Marketplace Shopping Center near North Shackleford and Rodney Parham Roads. This comes about 500 runners, comes after about 500 runners from at least 43 states and four countries participated in a fundraiser run in April. They raised 57,000 thousand dollars for the locally owned store, which has been serving Little Rock's running and walking community for more than a decade. U.S. job openings rose unexpectedly in April, a sign that the American labor market remains resilient, even as the Federal Reserve pushes interest rates higher to combat inflation. Employers posted 10.1 million job openings last month, and that's up from 9.7 million in March and the most since January. Economists had expected vacancies to slip below 9.5 million. Layoffs fell, but the number of people quitting their jobs slid last month a sign of confidence that they can find better pay or better working conditions elsewhere. And we'll know much more about the labor market tomorrow morning when the Labor Department issues job figures for May before the market opens. Forecasters survey surveyed by the data firm Fact set, ex set expect that the economy generated 188,000 new jobs in the month of May, and that would be down from 253,000 in April. They also call for a 3.5% unemployment rate. The unemployment rate fell to 3.4% in April, tying a 54-year low. Little Rock Air Force Base is welcoming a new commander today. Colonel Denny Davies is taking charge of the 19th Airlift Airlift Wing based in Jacksonville. A change of command ceremony starts at started at 10 o'clock and will be streamed live on the base Facebook page. Colonel Davies arrives after serving as vice commander of the 86th Airlift Wing based out of Ramstein Air Base in Germany. 
The outgoing commander, Colonel Angela Ochoa, leaving the airbase knowing she has a permanent place in its history. Colonel Ochoa is the first female to command the 19th airlift wing. Wake Up Central's Karen Fuller sat down with her recently as she reflects on her experience here in Arkansas. First commissioned in 2001, Angela Ochoa's 11th assignment brought her to Arkansas in 2021, two decades after her graduation from the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Her next adventure takes her to Maryland, but she says Arkansas will always have a special place in her heart. Arkansans are loving and generous people and really truly have taken in our military airmen and our families and treated them like their own. And I just cannot say thank you enough for all the ways that the, the state of Arkansas and all the Arkansans have supported the, the United States military and our airmen here at Little Rock Air Force Base. The Colonel was already familiar with the kindness of Arkansans from previous assignments in 2007 and 2015. It was that second assignment where she and her husband arrived as a couple but left with someone new. At the end of that assignment, we welcomed our first daughter into our family. So that's where, you know, it's home because this is where she was born and we became parents. The Ochoas now have two young daughters who couldn't ask for a better role model. Colonel Ochoa says she intentionally shares with her airmen that she goes to counseling to show them that their emotional needs are just as important as their physical health. What we ask of our airmen is a lot. We ask them to prepare themselves for combat, to prepare as a team for combat, um, and be ready to put their lives on the line. We encourage people, go get the help that you need, be proactive about your mental health care. Um, that is so important to me, and it's absolutely uh, emulated all the way up to the very top of the chain of command, and I'm proud of that. She's also proud of the air base community where the 10,000 personnel keep more than 60 C-130 cargo planes ready at a moment's notice. With more than 2,800 flying hours herself, she recalls the first time she sat behind the instrument panel on one of the planes that are nicknamed the Herc. I thought to myself, I can't believe they just gave me the keys to this million dollar jet, multi-million dollar jet, and these lives. Um, at the time, it was a six person crew. And the, the, the thought of the amount of trust that so many people have placed in me uh, because of the amazing training that I got that all started here at Little Rock Air Force Base. Karen Fuller, THV 11 News. Lyon College of Batesville has hired the founding dean for its incoming veterinary school in Little Rock. The private, the private liberal arts college said Wednesday that it had appointed Dr. Eleanor M. Green, Professor Emeretta and Dean Emeretta of Veterinary Medicine at Texas A&M University to lead its Lyon College School of Veterinary Medicine. She'll begin her official duties on July 1st and will lead the college's request for accreditation. The college is also working on establishing a dental school in January it hired Dr. Burke Soff as the founding dean of that school. The compromise bill to raise the debt ceiling and avert a potentially catastrophic default heads to the Senate today. It passed the House last night with bipartisan support, but not everyone is happy. Natalie Brown has the latest from Washington, D.C. Facing a deadline days away, Senate leaders want to act fast. The Senate will stay in session until we send a bill avoiding default to the president's desk, and we will keep working until the job is done. The bill is passed. The legislation to raise the debt ceiling overwhelmingly passed the House last night with ample bipartisan support, ending days of tense negotiations. Tonight, we all made history because this is the biggest cut and savings this Congress has ever voted for. The Fiscal Responsibility Act lifts the debt limit through early 2025, giving the U.S. more borrowing power to pay its bills. But it cuts federal spending in return, clawing back unused COVID relief money and IRS funding, loosening environmental rules for new projects, and placing stricter work requirements for some receiving food assistance. Just like in the House, some conservative Republicans and progressive Democrats in the Senate oppose the bill. There's no way I can pass this much uh, debt onto my grandchildren. Among the senators coming out against it are South Carolina's Tim Scott, who's running for president, and Vermont's Bernie Sanders. The American people, in my view, are sick and tired of seeing deficit reduction come on the backs of working people who are struggling. 
While some senators are pushing for amendments, leaders are hoping for a final vote before the week's end. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Treasury Department says the legislation must get to the president's desk before Monday or the government will not be able to pay its bills. And there are new developments in the investigation surrounding the former president's handling of classified documents. CBS News has confirmed that special counsel Jack Smith and his team have obtained an audio tape of Trump discussing a classified document that he held on to after leaving the White House. The sources said Trump acknowledges there are national security restrictions on the memo that detailed potential plans to attack Iran. Is it possible to have a whole country of non-smokers? What could that look like? Well, we're showing you after the break, but not before we show you some weather. Nathan. And it's a very warm and starting to become more humid day around central Arkansas with a few clouds bubbling up. Our rain chances go up somewhat for the first half of the weekend. I'll have more details on that forecast next. 